We all have our vision as to how our heroes will defeat Thanos in Avengers 4. Who will be the hero? How will everyone come back from turning to dust? While we've been focusing so much on what will happen in Avengers 4, it's time to focus on what won't happen in the movie. Before we begin, subscribe to CBR and ring that bell to join our notification squad so you never miss a video. Without further ado, let's get into some things that probably won't happen in Avengers 4. The X-Men Did someone say crossover? We wish. The X-Men are some of the most beloved superheroes ever. They boast some really awesome origin stories, are an awesome team on their own, and we can't forget to mention everything that's cool about Wolverine. So why not have them be introduced into the MCU? Comic books have done many successful crossovers in the past, so why not? The theory behind this is, if we're gonna get technical, that Disney has acquired Fox, which brings all the film rights of X-Men and the Fantastic Four under the same roof as the MCU. Some people are even floating rumors that there'll be a new movie called Avengers Heroes Reborn, which is relating to a 90s comic book event reuniting Marvel's mutants with the Avengers and other heroes that had been trapped in a parallel world. This new movie would lay the foundation for the merging of the two franchises. Honestly, it would be a smart move to introduce this shared world to the fans, because now everyone's favorite superheroes are basically roommates. We're sure Wolverine and Tony Stark would be awesome roomies. Now that's a movie we want to see. Logan and Tony fighting over some almond milk. Anyway, we digress. We also don't see the X-Men or the Fantastic Four showing up to help out in Avengers 4 for a few reasons. It's way too late in the game for a bunch of new characters to be introduced, let alone a whole team that's supposed to be assisting the Avengers. Avengers 4 is solely about the Avengers. They started this franchise, so they're going to be the ones who finish it. They won't be getting help from a last-minute crossover, even after the hype of the rights moving to Disney. If and when they want to merge the Avengers with X-Men or Fantastic Four, it won't be rushed and hopefully we'll take the time and care this merge would need to make a successful movie story-wise. Spider-Man's Black Suit Another question in everyone's minds is if Spider-Man gets the black symbiote suit in Avengers 4. The short answer is probably not. First off, Peter Parker has to stop being dust, although we're pretty sure that's gonna happen soon. Secondly, Disney, who owns Marvel, really hasn't discussed if, when, and where the black suit will come up in the franchise. So it probably won't show up in Avengers 4, especially because the powers that come with the suit don't really fit in with the overall goal of Avengers 4, which is, you know, saving everybody. The symbiote suit is known for enhancing the wearer's power, but also making them a highly aggressive and darker person. With so much ground to cover in Avengers 4, it's kinda hard to see them now having to tie in an aggressive Peter Parker. Maybe they'll tease us in a mid or post credit scene, or maybe it's in the next Spider-Man movie. Just not Avengers 4. Spidey's got enough to deal with. Crossover with Marvel Shows the Marvel Universe is a funny thing, so huge and expansive with so many amazing characters who we're always dying to see more of. Well, you're in luck if you're not only just a Marvel movie fan, but a Marvel TV fan as well, because there are some crazy interesting crossovers between the two. Sure, MCU characters appear in the Marvel shows, but the films and shows have been kept pretty separate. Netflix Marvel shows have almost made it a point of barely hinting at what's going on in the movies. Many fans think or hope that we'll be seeing some Marvel TV characters appear in this final installment of the Avengers movies. Why not pull out all of the stops in the last film? It would send the fandom reeling to see their favorite TV characters come save the day in Avengers 4. But so far, we've only seen MCU characters in TV shows, and not the other way around. Like Captain America the First Avengers crossover with Agent Carter, where Peggy plays Cap's long-lost love interest. She's been hanging around the Avengers MCU for a while, making appearances in a flashback in Ant-Man, and even when she was reference to in Avengers Age of Ultron and others. It's happened to Nick Fury as well, along with Maria Hill and even Lady Sif, who've all been seen popping up in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which makes sense because S.H.I.E.L.D. has been so important to the Avengers franchise since the beginning, so that cameo was an easy tie-in. This being said, seeing Lady Sif was pretty dang cool. The thing is, characters aren't the only things that make cameos from movies to Marvel TV shows. The events after Captain America Winter Soldier were reflected in the show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Winter Soldier basically gave the show its own reboot. The Marvel Netflix shows did address the events that occurred in Avengers 1, but they tend to stay away from the films and create their own IPs, which is all fair and well anyways. Marvel Studios likes to have control over their stories at all times, which makes sense because they're telling tons of complicated, overlapping stories at the same time. But this doesn't stop fans from begging to see their super TV characters in the MCU. It's not because they don't want to put them in the movies, it's really because Kevin Feige, the president of Marvel Studios, isn't in charge of the shows, which technically means the shows don't cross 
cross over entirely with the movies. However, now that Marvel Studios are planning to have new shows on the Disney streaming service like Loki and Scarlet Witch, those will probably connect with the films while Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Marvel Netflix shows will stay exclusive to their own little worlds. So will we be seeing any Marvel TV characters in Avengers 4? Probably not, but that doesn't mean that it'll never happen. It kind of feels like it's heading that way, but we just aren't there yet. We can dream, though. Tony Stark lives. Okay, so currently Tony Stark is basically stuck on a rock and trying to not only get off said rock, but also help save the day and bring his friends back. There are lots of theories on how Doctor Strange's master plan to reverse everything that happened in an Infinity War involved Tony, but it's clear that Tony Stark is essential in righting the wrongs that Thanos committed. So of course, the superheroes that got dusted are coming back, but we're pretty sure that Tony Stark won't make the end of the movie for a number of reasons. Robert Downey Jr. has been playing Iron Man for over a decade. A decade, you guys. It's a long, long time. It's about time he goes out with a bang. It's only fitting for a superhero like him. It's hard to imagine the MCU without his god complex and snarky comments, though. Some think Iron Man will sacrifice himself to save Peter Parker. Our guess is that he's used in the single winning outcome that Doctor Strange foresaw, which is basically putting all of humanity on Tony's shoulders. No pressure or anything, who, of course, will overcome all his personality flaws to save the world right before he loses his life. We may even see someone else become the new Iron Man to start off a new franchise. All we know is that Downey's contract is up, and he's not walking out of this movie alive. Adam Warlock Fans have been waiting for Adam Warlock to show up somewhere in the MCU after his hinted arrival at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. He does have a long history with Thanos, though, as he's been one of Thanos' chief rivals in the comics. Adam also has experience with the Soul Stone when he projected himself two years into the future and took the soul of his dying self into the Soul Gem, which is the Soul Stone of the MCU. When he comes out of the Soul World, which is really just a pocket dimension inside the Soul Gem, and learns that Thanos had again become a threat to the universe, Adam projects his soul into to a recently deceased human doing the same for his Soul Gem co-inhabitants, including Pip and Gamora. Fans are super interested in seeing more of this Soul world on screen after seeing just a little glimpse of it right after Thanos' snap. Joe Russo has even said that just because we saw Gamora, or, well, anyone in the Soul world, doesn't mean they're really there. It's more of a spiritual representation of them. The Soul world and Adam Warlock kind of go hand in hand, but we don't think we'll be seeing any of him in Avengers 4. We may see him in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, though. Since only Rocket Raccoon and Nebula are left alive, they could use some fresh faces. All the Avengers come back. We absolutely loved the tag scene of the first Avengers with all the heroes sitting around eating shawarma, but it's pretty much a guarantee we won't see something similar after the conclusion of Avengers 4, because we're confident that some superheroes won't be making it out of this film alive. Maybe they paid the ultimate price to bring back their friends and the rest of the world. Why do we think that? Well, because it's not a secret that multiple classic Avengers have their movie contracts up, meaning they aren't slated for any more movies outside this one. Granted, these superheroes have had their day in the sun for multiple solo movies and appearing in the other Avengers films. Those fateful few are Captain America, who always sacrifices himself for the greater good, and Bruce Banner. Thor might be a goner too, leaving someone else to pick up the hammer. That's a good chunk of the core group. While a few other Avengers contracts are changing after this film, possibly suggesting they have a future standalone movie, we have no idea what's in the cards next. But it's safe to say the Avengers roster will be shook up after Avengers 4. Nebulas of Villain in the Infinity Gauntlet comic book, which is the groundwork for the Infinity War movie, Nebula, Thanos' adopted daughter, steals the Infinity Stones from her good old dad, forcing the Avengers to fight her instead. Maybe Avengers 4 follows the comic book's lead. After she gets tortured by Thanos and her sister Gamora gets murdered, Nebula ends up on a pretty evil pathway. We're doubtful this will happen, but that's quite the 180-degree turn for Nebula to take at this point in the storyline. Since Guardians of the Galaxy, she's been on her redemption arc, along with Gamora slowly understanding the way she has failed her sister. Making Nebula bad again would be backtracking everything they worked for and ignoring that character development. It's not worth the movie's time to undo all that. Plus, it's just bad storytelling. They all stay dead. What if all our superheroes just stay dusted? The movie screenwriters have said that the deaths are real and the superheroes are actually dead, so it would be shocking if this actually happened. 
Thankfully, it's safe to say we know better. Some of Thanos' victims have sequel movies coming out, so that doesn't seem very viable, and keeping them all dead really shakes up the future for the MCU. Plus, we know Tom Holland is shooting Spider-Man's follow-up, so we guess it's not exactly sad that all the heroes won't stay dead in Avengers 4. Unless you're rooting for that for some sick, twisted reason. It's more than likely Avengers 4 will have most, if not all, the superheroes come back to life while also bringing back the other half of the population that got decimated in the snap. And there you have it! What are your thoughts on Avengers 4? Who do you think is going to be the new hero? Let us know in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to CBR for more videos just like this one. Thanks for watching.